The graduation of 450 Nelson Mandela Fidel Castro medical students has been marred by protests staged by the provincial SACP outside the Sarah Bartman Hall at UCT. Deputy Health Minister Dr. Smong Seni Zomo presided over this year's graduation. And Newsroom Africa's Nasi Pisame is there and she's standing by to tell us about some of these disruptions. Uh, Nasi Pisame, good afternoon. Well, fortunately for us, the morning graduation was not necessarily disrupted. However, protest or picket action by provincial SACP was staged right outside the venue um, where they basically wanted the ear of the deputy minister, as you mentioned, was presiding over that graduation. But to talk to us more, seeing that you received a memorandum, I'm joined by the deputy health minister, Dr. Spongseni Zomo. So thank you so much for your time. I'm going to jump right into it. You received a memorandum from SACP today regarding this particular program that the Western Cape has not been included in the program. Yeah, no, we must firstly commend the leadership of the, of the SACP in the Western Cape because I did get the message that they would like to meet me at the time we're still in the graduation ceremony. But for them really to wait until we complete with the first session of the graduation, I thank them very much. Uh, I have now received the memorandum which speaks mainly to why is a national program of, uh, that was initiated by President Fidel Castro Nelson Mandela is not expanding to the Western Cape. Uh, and I started by informing the leadership that one, we do get allocation of resources from, from Parliament as the Department of Health and therefore we have to give each and every province appropriately. But when we give them, we do not make prescriptions as to how they would use that money. And uh, it has always been our wish that this program that was initiated by these uh, icons is really taken up. Now, in the, in the event that this program is not getting up in the Western Cape, we have been having discussions with the minister, uh, saying maybe we must actually consider getting a particular budget from National that is going to come in here and target children from um, um, Kaili, Shakukule to Stellan and all over Kopongolech and just assist them with this program. And we have not come to that level because we are continuously persuading the Western Cape to consider. But uh, the MEC for Health will also be leading within a collective. So it is a, the provincial government that decides not to support the program as yet. I will have to let you go soon, Minister, because uh, Deputy Minister, because it's pouring. So basically the program started in 1997 and thus far um, 30 students, have 3,000 3, students have benefited from the program. Does it take over 20 years to convince and persuade the Western Cape government to participate in a program that assists previously disadvantaged students to being medical doctors and then, you know, assisting their various communities or disadvantaged communities? There may be political reasons. There may be political reasons that the Western Cape is not supporting the program. And uh, that's why I say we persuade. Uh, in fact, uh, we, maybe this COVID that has really engulfed the world in our country might make them to change their minds because uh, the doctors from Cuba came into our country and supported all provinces, including the Western Cape. We benefited was of their high quality of specialization in Cuba, focus on primary care. They were able to assist us to turn the corner on COVID-19, including the Western Cape, uh, uh, including the Western Cape benefited from that. But we continue persuading. Now, it's just that in terms of cooperative governance, nationally, you will not come and prescribe. You will always persuade and really make them realize that this is the right thing to do. So even if they continue, that's why, Failure to be persuaded, we are thinking of maybe doing it ourselves nationally, maybe at a smaller scale to support the program, because you can't, in, spirit, in the spirit of intergovernmental uh, relations, prescribe to them what to do and what not to do. If you could just outline for us how the National Department is looking at bringing this program closer to home. Yeah, look, we have had criticism in the country, including criticism that also come from the TA, which says the program is expensive. We might agree with them in terms of we have to fly students to Cuba, back from Cuba. When there's a, a bereavement in the family, we bring the students back. So we really spend quite a significant amount on issues which is not real medical training. We have been persuaded by what we have seen between Angola and Cuba. 
where they now bring the program into Angola. We think of the, doing the same, bring the program into South Africa, get a few of the Cuban lecturers to come and support us in the program. And I think once we do that, we'll really be eliminating reasons that might make people not to support this program. Maybe the Western Cape will then buy into the program also on that. We'll have to leave it there. Um, um, and I just want to find out, before I let you go quickly, how much has the department spent on this particular program? Look, on average, we don't spend, if you are looking into removing these frills, we have not spent more than what we spend per student in the UCT, at VETS, or in UKZ. And it's almost about a million per student over the training that they actually receive. Yeah. Over a million spent on a, a student who is in this program in Cuba. I beg your pardon? You said it is a million rand per student who is part of this program in Cuba. Yeah, which is, which is not different than what you spend if you were to support a medical student training in UCT, VETS, or uh, remove the frills, just keep the medical training. It's almost equivalent. This is for, this, the million that you're talking about is a period of six years or annually? No, it's a, it's a, it's a six-year period. Thank you so much, Minister. The Minister unfortunately has to leave, but I do have the SACP um, a Secretary here, Benson Lenz, who actually led um, this particular protest action to um, the Minister's doorstep, or rather Deputy Minister's doorstep, to highlight that the Western Cape has not been a part of this program, as we heard, for over 20 years. Benson, what do you make out of this and the fact that the Health Minister could not respond to the questions that you posed to her? Uh, let me make a point first by saying we welcome and note the primary reaction made by the Deputy Minister in respect to the content of our memorandum. And uh, it is for that reason that we took a decision now that the Western Cape and UCT is hosting that we come and elevate this matter. It's not for the first time the SSB in the province is raising this matter. We have been raising it for several times. Now we have started, we are not going to stop till our demands are met. And we have here this liberal notion by the Deputy Minister to say, listen, we are not prescriptive. We are saying, stamp your authority, ensure that this provincial government complies with the national programs, right, which are in the interest of the motive forces of our revolution, the workers and the poor in particular. Therefore, we are looking forward to ensure that the poor and the, I mean, uh, the working class children from the Western Cape are benefiting from this particular program. You yourself as a very pertinent question that this program potentially was going to benefit uh, the poor from Kailicha, Mitchell's Plain, from areas of Satra Star, Beaufort West, etc. Those poor students, others are either excluded here in South Africa or unable to go to any university because this neoliberal right-wing government is actually blocking such opportunities. This is the moment, it is raining, it is pouring, and we believe that this indeed will become a success. Benson, um, the government says, national government says they've been persuading um, the Western Cape government um, for quite a long time. Do you believe that uh, the persuasion tactics are working, seeing that the Western Cape has not participated in this particular program? We are concerned about what appears as a liberal interface between the, the national and provincial government. And this provincial government of the Western Cape is bent to undermining any national directive which are actually, for example, now as we speak, they are busy with devolution of powers at the level of the police, etc., and transport, and so on. And therefore, even on this, on this one, they will be prepared to call all out to ensure that it does not take place. Because why? They are controlled by the Western U.S. imperialists. It is for that reason that we as the workers must be prepared to roll out mass action to ensure that people of the Western Cape are benefiting. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Benson Renzu, the Secretary of the Western Cape and the SACP, as much as they've handed over the memorandum to the Deputy Minister of Health, Dr. Smogusen Romo, they have given national government 30 days to respond to the memorandum of demands.